It's for the glory. Shout out to Jordan. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. <laughs> Sunday, what's up, gang? What's, what's, going going on, man? Man? what's going on, brother? It's been a minute. Welcome to the been show. Yeah, yeah. I gotta show Gabe love because you was there when I was in the apartment. Humble it was beginnings, just what you man. Mean with one person. Humble beginnings, and you look around and it's like you just see God's hand. You know, just God's working For real, man. in your life, and, and you know, it's something that that I can appreciate. You know, that's why I love talking to you, man, because uh, you're so grateful. Yeah, I like being around people that are just like appreciative yeah. of things, even though they've been through things good and bad. Right, right. Like you always remind to not forget that. Yeah. What's something that you're grateful for at this moment? Whew, I got this lady in my life right now that, man, she's she's just like Wonder Woman. You know what I mean? She just keeps me poignant, you know? And it's like when you find a good woman that's a good man, it... it, it it voluntarily or involuntarily sparks this thing inside of you that you want to change, you want to do something, you know what I mean? You want to be bigger than, than you are and better than you are. And so I'm really grateful for her right That's now. That's what's up, man. I'm grateful for my son. I'm grateful for the music. You know, I'm grateful for God foremost, so maybe that's where I should start. How's little man doing? He's good. He's good. Real good. Bless. How old now? He's about a year and a half. Wow. Man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a uh, something quick, else. Huh? Yeah, man. It's... Man, these kids is different, bro. Yeah, they are. I seen uh, my, one of my coworkers, a man that she just had a uh, daughter, four months old, right? Already trying to roll over. Oh, for real? Yeah, man. I don't know if it's like post-COVID babies or not. <laughs> or that baby. These babies is different. They talking. They know how to use tablets. Yeah. They are. Yeah. They are smart. So, Jeremy, let me ask you, man. What are you grateful for? Uh, I mean, I'm just grateful for my job and uh, the opportunities I'm getting. Like, right now, I should be That's what's getting up. a new apartment within the next couple of weeks. Good, so man. Congratulations. I'm able to get yeah. back out on my own now. So. That's what's up. Man, like having you on. I'm grateful for um, experience. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've always been like on go. I was talking to my homie Al Mecca about it yesterday. Just being able to sit still. I know that's mm. not something that I'm always mm. doing. Mm. So I'm grateful to just. <laughs> Right. I'm always, I'm, all, I'm always doing something. But it's so important, though, and especially as an artist, because yeah. that's your time to reflect. And it's like whenever you get into a mode where you're feeling like creating, sometimes you got to step back just to figure out what direction or what trajectory you, you know, you're going to take the, the project or single or just whatever you're going to write when the pen touches the bag. And I know? feel like I've been on go since yeah. 2008. For real? You know what I'm saying? Like from then until like... 2023 or 2024 was like, I was like all right let me because now people are like oh man when you dropping something because I'm always yeah. dropping every year yeah so I'm grateful for just experience and being still like I went to the uh Italian festival uh -huh. last night yeah. and it felt good to just seeing enjoy Prince. it and seeing Prince bro that's a monumental run yeah that's that's what 15, 14 years yeah man I just nonstop, grind bro, bro. yeah Bro, nonstop. If man. I had a hat on, bro, hats off, bro. <laughs> Thank for you, man. real, bro. And, and people, people, it's gonna come a, a certain point in time. It may be when you decide to hang it all up that you get them flowers, bro. And somebody like me who's following in the footsteps that you laid. Appreciate you, man. I have to give you them flowers. It's bro. I have like to. nonstop, cause like. Krishan, you know, even before yeah, the podcast, he'd always be seaweed. <laughs> Shout out seaweeds, man. Yeah. He um he would always be like, yo, bro, when you gonna like Chill. Yeah. Be, I would take offense. I'd be like, what you mean, bro? Me and a rap artist, what yeah, you yeah, mean, yeah, chill? Yeah. Well, as I got older, uh -huh. I'm 34 years old now. Yeah. As I've been yeah. like, man, I just want to sit down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. you know what? And then, like, with music, I don't want to I don't want to force myself to, like, make some fire. I want it to come natural. Right. And sometimes right. when you're in the studio and you just force it, it don't feel right. It's not the same. So now I'm just like, all right, John, it's okay to just focus on the podcast. Right. It's right. okay to just... You know, do lyric videos and promote the other 300 yeah. albums I and you have. Got, you got footage, bro, I've seen footage of you from like like 10 years ago. I feel like, bro, I've, been, I feel like I've been making content forever. Yeah, it's so crazy. I'm grateful to just be it's still, crazy. man. I'm grateful to even meet you. Like, yeah. I'm never one to collaborate with people because mm -hmm. nobody's consistent. Yeah. But you and Rama mm -hmm. and uh, Gabe, and not Gabriel, but uh, Grim Saya yeah, yeah. and Elijah, like, mm -hmm. I look at y'all as like the newer generation of artists, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, to come from this city, like, I see y'all yeah. passion. Yeah. You know, and that's something that's really been hard for me to notice. And a lot of artists in Canton mm -hmm. is that passion. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people be like, oh, it's Canton, but y'all, like, care about where y'all yeah. come from. And also is y'all are men. Yeah. Y'all have lives. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I was always on the fence about documenting that, but the fact that I, I can document, hey, y'all, I'm rapping, but I'm delivering mail, too. Right, right, right. I love that you share your son and yeah. your, being a father. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you, man, um, when it comes to Canton, I know we, like, bouncing around, mm -hmm. like, 
What's something about the city that inspires you as an artist? Because Ooh. I remember when you was singing back at the mall. Yeah. You were yeah, singing yeah, to the yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, funny yeah. story. Gabe was singing to the, he was walking up to the lady, singing uh -huh. up to him at the mall. That's so you me. was like a little urban legend, man. That's me. Uh, Tell that story a little bit. Oh, dude, just love. Just That's loving this. Canton. So I went through a lot growing up, and, and my way of getting over it was making people smile because it just helped me, you know what I mean? So I would go around and just sing. That's just my, I grew up singing. So um, you, you had asked the question, what inspires me about Canton, though? Uh, I would say the diversity. I love the fact that we've yeah. got literally everything here. I mean, you could be you could be on shore, right, and you walk about 15 minutes down the road, and you reach... Market Heights, you in, you in a suburb, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's just inspiring, bro, to see that diversity. I mean, we've got every every walk of life, every... We was just talking about you. We was just yeah, talking about you. We was just oh, talking about you. Look at it. <laughs> see we. What's up, man? It. You know you got a couple of minutes. Sit down there. What's, What's up, going man? What's on with it? It's been a minute. You on the camera, too. What's up, man? <laughs> What's up, man? He chilling. He want to talk on him, man? What's up, Weez? Dad mode for real. Sure. What's up, man? You want to say a couple words? Everybody to miss you. <sighs> I know y'all miss me. <laughs> it's cool. I miss y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. too. <laughs> no, nah, it's cool. We're just doing the dad thing, as you can see. Just taking care of some priorities. But uh, we ain't gone. We're going to be back. Just had to come show love real quick. Make sure the guys know I, I wasn't missing out. I ain't trying to have a guest yeah, think I'm not. skipping out on them. Yeah, we're not beefing. <laughs> Stop that. We're not beefing. We have lives. We yeah, we just we just doing some things, you know what I'm saying? What's up, but nephew, you want to talk? Put the mic. Say hi. You want to say hi? You speak? You was just talking, <laughs> doing all that talking. Uh, He's still shy, getting used to everything, for real, for it's real. So crazy seeing him in light. Let me see. This man is like really in dad mode, right? Yeah. <laughs> You've been talking about it for a lot of episodes, so I'm glad you came, man. So everybody, man, he handling business, man. I'm happy for you, brother. You know what I'm saying? The grind don't stop. What's going on with you guys? Like, we're not beefing, bro. It's just life. I, I, life. <laughs> he has a kid, too. <laughs> he got another kid on the way, so I got some things going on. Wow. Congratulations, yeah, bro. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, man. Yeah, how you been, dog? Man, you see it, man. Living, just getting on for church, you know. Oh yeah, just, yeah. You gotta, living gotta good, give, man. Give, living good, you know. Gotta give them all the grace. I got the man. loafers, you know. The fresh loafers yeah, on. I got the loafers on. The Where boats. your penny at, man? Huh? My mom used to put the pennies in mine. Yeah, yeah. I was old school. <laughs> <laughs> You got some new fits. I'd be so damn worried about getting, making sure he's straight on. That's right. So I'm in here in the sandals, the dad sandals. That pineapple shirt is fire that he got on. That's that's his mama. That's his mama. Mm -hmm. Hey, Gabe, tell us about the church, man. You been going to church? Tell us about that. Yeah, it's the Church of God uh, Worship Center out on Harrison Ave. I got invited. Uh, it's my third week going. And it's amazing. It's amazing just what being around good, positive energy that just, you know, come together in, in the name of unity and love, man, yeah. what it can do for you, you know. Uh, it, it keeps some demons up off you, if you, if, you know. And uh, if you ever feel like, you know, you're, you're straying away or if you ever feel like things are just becoming overwhelming, you get confused and all these di different aspects of life, you know, just walk up into a church, man. You'd be surprised at the, at the result. You'd be surprised at how you start feeling when you walk out of there. I 100 percent agree with that. You know? It's funny because my dad being a pastor, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like we've always talked, you know, about God and everything and just yeah. the stuff he doesn't really talk about in his sermons. But yeah. there's been times where like. I'll be dealing with stuff before I go up there. Like yeah. one time I just popped up on him. I didn't even let him know I was coming. Yeah. And, you know, I popped up on his church and everything. And uh, his sermon that time, it was like he was speaking, like he was speaking Directly right to Directly to me. you. It's, and, bro, it's amazing, bro. But, and, but people, you got to realize it's not him. It's yeah. not the pastor. Yeah. Like that's really God that's talking to you. Exactly. And, you know, like you said, if you start feeling like you're straying away and shit's like looking bleak and all that. It's like this situation here, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't have him sitting here slouch spilling Capri Suns down my back yeah. if <laughs> if it wasn't for God. That's, That's all right. him, you know what That's I mean? Right. Over everything. So just really, you, if you believe in that, I'm not telling there, I don't push my beliefs on nobody, but if mm -hmm. you believe in God and really believe in God, that man going to do for you. Yeah. That man going to do for you. Yeah. Yeah, man, just to attest to that, you know, um, like I said, as a friend, I'm happy to see him. You know what I'm saying? Because I know the fight. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just happy to see him. Him spilling that drink down your back. Yeah, he ain't getting good. used to me yet, but it's all good. We got to get you on the mic. You gonna, Can you say something? He'll get there. He just... He just shy. Dang, he ain't ready to spit enough some <laughs> yet. I'm, I'm like bothered. 
<laughs> he said I'm bothered. Flipping all over the couches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Him in Brooklyn. He he loved Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. We got him in the car and uh she wasn't with us. I was like, we'll be right back. She was, well, where's Brooklyn? I'm like, well, she can't come with us everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But oh, so you be talking. Yeah. yeah. Ah, he looking around this, all this he stuff. Like you like it? He like them ladies, man. He, he ain't like trying, that? Yeah, he ain't trying to rock with none of that. He like them ladies, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I love it, man. Jeremy, you still don't want no babies? No. What? Dang, he don't want what? no babies, bro. Crossing that off the checklist <laughs> of not having. What? You done, Gabe? No, no, Wait, bro, that. I want a whole football team, <laughs> bro, I want as many as I can get out, man. I ain't going to hold you. Between TikTok and him and his son, uh -huh. my coworker, I'm having just the craziest baby fever, bro. You want, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to be in the right situation. That's I had my it. first kid when I was like That's 20. Key. That's key right there. Yeah, bro. but also, man, I like to travel. Because it's, mm. like, the experience, like, I don't want, I ain't talking, I don't know why, but the experience with my second born's mom, mm. uh, she's doing August and, and him and his mom, you know, and his mom, it's, it's night and day. Yeah. And when you, if you with somebody who really on the same page and y'all got a kid on the way, people would be like, oh, you see how things go when the baby come. It's like, no, man, because nothing's changed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we still locked in, right. still very much in love with this woman. She swears up and down. Oh, I'm getting bigger. I told her, I tell her every day, you are as fine as you were the day I met That's you. Right. And. This is just, it's just a different experience. And you don't want no pissed off pregnant women. Yeah, nah. Man, that's you. <laughs> and it goes back to the church, the church background, you know, when yeah. doing it in, in, in relation to the way that it's supposed to be done. It's like, like with my, with my child's mother, it was like, I didn't, I didn't take that proper precaution, yeah. you know, and things fell through just naturally. There was no way that it was going to work. And I was trying to force things to work, you know, and, and. I ended up hurting myself even more yeah. in the process because now I'm overextending and I'm overexerting myself. Whereas I feel like when you when you do it, there's I mean there's the right way, right? Right, right, right. Quote unquote. But to me, the right way is to do it the way that God, which you know, God commanded it, which is you know to not do it out of wedlock, yeah. you know. And but to, we, we we didn't did it out of wedlock. You know what I mean? And and <laughs> that's why some of the things that happened to yeah, us has happened true. to us. You know what I mean? That's why I said, like, for me and this baby fever I've had, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if I if, if it comes around again, uh -huh. I would just do it the right way. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, it. I was young. And um, also in that time, you're still trying to figure out yourself as a person. You know what I mean? So you bringing the child in the world. You don't really know the, even the person you're having the child with. You know what so I mean? So it's like now when you, you come through again, that's why I like with him. He might just be like, it'll be different this time, but in a better way. And it's not even a bad thing because that's the fruit of it. Right. You know what I mean? That's why I say I, I'll never regret exactly. the relationship. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because this is, this is the gift. We get, we get the beauty of, that. you know. You know, I would I if, if if I had a choice, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. To have Tell me about it. That kid, <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we, we wish we all had a choice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly him with who I'm with now, 100%. I ain't right. gonna lie, but right. like, you know, I'm not mad at that. You know, it is what it is. I ain't saying she not a good person, a good mom. You know, right. he's still right. breathing everything. Yeah, yeah. He fed. He's healthy, right. and that's what I care about. That's you know it. what I'm saying? When it comes to me and her, it don't it's just him. Yeah. It's just him. My sister gets mad at me because, like, when she loves the kids and they say no, and they be like, "Oh, you can't have that cookie." I'll be like. Yeah, you got that cookie. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to get off of that, bro. You got to get I off of that, bro. Right? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love the babies, man. I, I just love I them. get it, man, but. You just spoil, I mean, my stepdaughter. I spoil her for real, for real. Yeah, she, I spoiled, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. she, before I got, you know, before me and her mom locked in, I had always known that, you know, she wanted a dog but couldn't do that because of the previous relationship and everything. Yeah. But, like, I was like, fuck that. Let's go get a dog. And See, the dichotomy for me was totally opposite. Yeah, it I, was me trying to be the disciplinarian, and, and she would undermine kind of like everything that I was right, trying to implement. Right, right, right. And, 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 and her, her thought process was, okay, he's not even old enough to really understand these com, com, you know, concepts. But to me, it's like, man, the earlier you begin teaching this child discipline and, and you know. We, we, we're the results of that, you know what I'm saying, yeah, when it comes to, yeah. like, early discipline because, like, I was just talking to my sisters about it. Me and all of my sisters, we had we were we were cleaning with chemicals by like ten o'clock. By, <laughs> by, 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 by ten, 10 years, years old, old yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like we woke up 
If you wanted to, if you wanted to chill before cleaning up, you oh, you had to get up on a Sunday morning or Saturday morning at like eight in the morning. Like you had to be up before my grandma got up. Because as soon as she got up, it, it was, was like on. you started hearing Dark Souls it was, music. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, as soon as you hear Bobby Jones, if you wasn't going to church, it was time to clean. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. and, and and don't don't not go to church because then you're not doing nothing else. You know what I'm saying? You're not doing anything <laughs> else. You basically on punishment. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. go to you can't go to church. You can't hop on that intended. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Like it's none of that. But you know, discipline ain't all yelling and screaming at your kids. No, That's what no. a lot of people think it is. No. And it's like just showing them like Structure. my stepdaughter. She has a concept of pr- business expenses and profit already and how, because how, she's making these. She's ten, about to be 10. ten. Because she's making these bracelets. You know what I'm saying? But she realizes, oh, in order to make the colors for everybody, I got to use some of the money for the braces I already spent to go get more beads so I can go out and do. And she knows that. She understands And these are it. principles that are going to be with her for the rest of her Same life. Thing. Same with him. I kind of bribe him like, hey, you want to go outside? Well, we got to make sure we got bre- our, fu- our bellies are full so that mm-hmm. we ain't out there passing exactly. out. Exactly. Eat breakfast, no problem. Mm-hmm. Sleep. Same thing. Oh, yeah. if we want to go outside tomorrow. We got to get all our energy. Right. So we, we got to sleep tonight. Went right. right to sleep last night. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's like. It's not hard to discipline kids. It's not hard to instill no. principles in them. You just really got to want to do that and not yeah. put a tablet in front of them. Exactly. Because a lot of that is exactly. what's going on is you're letting these YouTube, these influencers raise your kids and not you. And when you put it like that, sure, I mean. it puts in a perspective that it was my fault for not being able to to explain or expand upon that thought you know maybe she had thought that when i say discipline that just meant spanking spanking them nah, and that's not it at it. all you know that's not even where my mind goes at all it's it's that structure and that you know it's like you didn't go there because you understood that because you've been disciplined but you weren't beat up on yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. Saying? a lot of people they ain't been disciplined ever Mm. Like they don't realize they've mm. never been disciplined. That's like, deep. oh, just, just, oh yeah, you can't go to that party. You can't go hang out with your friends. It's not disciplining them because right. they're gonna find a way to do that shit, shit anyway. And when they you get know? away from home, they about to go. Yeah, <laughs> we doing a lot of uh, unlearning, like yeah. how we, uh, how we was brought up versus how yeah. we show our kids. And one of those avenues is discipline. So like, like I said, it's different ways. They always got to be hard. No, nah. you no, know, it's different ways of. Um, Doing it, man. Like, I love Even that. loving on your child is a discipline. It's, yeah. You yeah. know, giving them hugs and, and, and physical attention and affection, that's a discipline, you know? It's sitting down with them and, and reading to them, that's a discipline, you know? Teaching them how to start to clean, that's a discipline. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I love that our first icebreaker was uh, the Daddy's Club. And it's, and it's brand new. Just watching like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't even relate. Hey, real quick, Jeremy, it was like this is the Father's episode of Say What You Mean podcast. Yeah. But real quick, man, uh, where can they follow you at? Shout your social media. Out. Yeah, I'm on all socials. Uh, you can find me at Gabriel the Angel. The L on Angel is a seven. Uh, every platform, TikTok to to Instagram. Shoot, we probably still on MySpace out there somewhere. Reverb Nate. No, I know I got mine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Reverb Nate. Nation. Reverb Nation. I was just having a conversation with somebody yesterday about what? that, man. Yeah, yeah. Dang, Jeremy, where can I follow you at? I don't know what it is. It's Jeremy Andrew on Facebook or on Instagram at underscore ginger ninja underscore one. Uh, I like see, see where can I follow you at? You can follow me on Instagram, Krishan underscore white. Facebook, Krishan white. White is spelled backwards. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a good time. Come follow me. That's right. Where can I follow you at, buddy? Want to say hi? Hmm? So you can follow me at the real Kai White at Instagram. <laughs> Where'd you come up with the name Kai? Kai? That yeah. was... K-A-I? Cobra Kai. K-H-A-I. No, K-H-A-I. K-H-A-I. Ooh. K-H-A-I. But I don't know. It just kind of popped into my head. But then after that, like, uh, his name, his full name is Kylan Marcellus White. So mm. I don't know what it is. I kind of, re- I kind of regret calling him Marcellus now because I keep wanting to call my newborn. I, I, like, I, I, I'm like, man, it'd be nice. I wish I didn't already give you that name. What if you flipped him? Marcellus Kai White. Oh, Kai Marcellus not White and Marcellus Kai White. Like, That's not talking about baby names on a podcast, right? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm about to look up what John's his name about, means, though. Yeah. John's about to get that fever. I'm about to get that. Hey, man, I'm trying to avoid the fever, Gabe. <laughs> Wait a minute, okay? No, no, we got to hype it up. We got it. We got it. You know, we got to build it up. It's I, anticipation. I'd like to see you with a, with a, I, like, I'd, I'd like to see you as a full time dad. Ooh. Ooh. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok at Jean P the MC. <laughs> www.jeanpmc.com. Make sure you follow us on YouTube.com slash Jean P the MC. Solid the podcast. Like, rate, comment, subscribe, all that. Gabe, you gonna stick around with us for a minute? Yeah, I'm rocking with y'all. All right, man. We're gonna see y'all in a minute. Say what you mean. Gabriel the Angel. Peace. Peace. Uh, say what you mean. Mean what you mean.
what you say. I'm from the 330. Where them boys don't play. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. John P. <laughs> What's up, man? One, two. Peace. Let me talk my shit again. Yo, episode 149. My nephew, Kylan. See, we is in the house. We out. Peace, man. Right. Peace. Episode 149, Say What You Mean Podcast. Jean P. the MC. Gabriel, the angel in the house. My guy, Jeremy, here holding it down with me. What's going on with you, man? How's your Sunday? It's beautiful. It started yeah. off just amazing, you know? I haven't been sleeping on a mattress, and these last two nights I've been able to sleep on a bed, so... Good, man. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been real grateful good. for that, for proper true, rest. True, It's the little things. It really is. 100%, man. It really is. 100%. You know, this Sunday, man, this is episode 149. It's crazy. Gabe, you was in my apartment when we was doing a podcast. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I don't even remember what episode it was, but it's crazy. Man, I think it was almost... No, it wasn't a double digits. It was, yeah, it was yeah, double, it was yeah. like 20s. Yeah, it was 20, like 20, early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I had the recorder in the middle and yep, set yep. up my stand that we still yep. did it. And I just took pictures of them in the Stuck pocket. around, got a, got a track down for your album. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, was man, awesome. I'm, I'm just grateful that I got to experience you on the music side and as a friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful for all of that, man. Likewise, but, likewise. Before we get into the episode, I know what time it is. Are you going to do the sponsor? It's sponsor time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's sponsor time. Sponsor first being this place we are in, the Hub Art Factory. Shout out to Tim Carmen and the good folks here at the Hub Art Factory. Gabe, what you think of the space, man? I think it's incredible. Like I was saying earlier, uh, just seeing the, the progression, you know, uh, just seeing how, how you've been able to grow and, and things have grown around you as you're growing. And I mean, if you look around, this is this is my kind of space. It's all over the place. Yeah. It looks like my mind, you know, <laughs> which is uh, it's getting a little bit more orderly. So I, I, I envision this place getting a little like bit more orderly. I feel like when you're creative, it's always going to be like that. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm for me. For you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, speak for yourself, yeah, bro. Man. <laughs> so, so, so shout out to the Hub Art Factory. Glad you like the space. Shout out to yeah. Latrice Snodgrass Equity House. Aaron Dukes at Pristine Steam Wash. Those are our sponsors. Yeah, man. So, Gay, let's start from the beginning, man. You're from Canton. What side you repping? From Canton. I'm going to go ahead and rep the Northeast. Northeast, yep. okay. Popular yep. side in the city. Yeah, right there off of uh, Harrisburg. Harrisburg and 17th. You know, we're right down the street from Crenshaw. Um, yeah, used to walk to school, you know, Mad Jets up there. Yeah, yeah, Midway and 19th, you know. Man, he was Northeast, Northeast. Northeast, Northeast, <laughs> you know, Northeast baby. Yeah, you know? man. What was it like growing up for you in the Northeast? Oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It gave me the background that I have today. You know, I, I was saying that, you know, Canton is so diverse, and, and the Northeast really, really expanded upon that. I mean, we... We had like nice houses right up the street, and then we also had to crack, you know, the the, the spots right up the yeah, street. Yeah. You know, it's a balance. Just a balance, and, and just being able to become familiar with both sides of that. It, it just it made me who I am, you know. And all the while, you know, being a biracial individual, you know, being having a black dad and having a white mom, you know, that taught me in that too. And so I'm just learning all these different parts and not only just myself, but seeing how it translates out into the world. And it's just, Canton's beautiful, bro. Canton's beautiful. That's, that's really all I can say about it, man. What's been your earliest relationship or your earliest memory of music? True. Um, I mean, my mama likes to tell me I, I came out the womb singing. And, and I believe that, but in terms of, you know, falling in love with music, uh, I had stated, you know, the, the home life was turbulent growing up. And so, uh, you know, I just naturally was inclined to find myself in, in, in the music. You know, I would, I would listen, I can remember just sitting on the school bus, you know, listening to like, listening to Kendrick or Drake back in the day, you know, and and just finding myself in these records, you know, and just hearing these guys almost like tell my story for me. Yeah. And and it was profound. And it came to a certain point to where I, I realized that, okay, this is this is really what I wanna do. You know, I wanna be that for somebody. You know, I wanna be the the artist who helps somebody get through their journey, you know. What was on what was on Gabe's playlist True. back in the day? It was diverse. It was really diverse. Um, a lot of the mainstream stuff that was out, you know, I liked a lot of the T Pain stuff. Um, Can't go wrong with no T Pain. You know, I liked the, I liked the Kendricks, the Drake, um, and then I also had like this own little little niche that that I was into. Um, I liked a, a cat named Justin Ozuka. 
uh, you know, he was pro- profound growing up. Justin I mean, Osuka. Yeah, he's cold, cold brother. Um, and then, you know, I didn't start getting into, like, the Neo Soul, the stuff like that, you know, the D'Angelo, the, the Jill Scott, the Lauren Hills. I didn't start until I was grown and, and really could, you know, the Donny Hathaways, the Teddy, Teddy Pendergrass, you know. I didn't grow in, in appreciation for that until I, I, I had gained a little bit of life experience, you know. Man, you said Donny Hathaway. A little Hathaway. bit more. Donny Hathaway. Yeah. His story, Ooh. his songs, you know what I'm saying? Jeremy, what's your favorite type of R&B or any type of What's on your playlist? My play, yeah. I, I mean, it really just depends on uh, what I'm feeling that day. Like right yeah. now, I've been big into like mix the plug and Mexican OT. But like back in the day, I was a big fan of uh, big fan of T Pain, big fan of uh, um, T Pain can sing anything. <laughs> that is so cool, brother. His whole era from like oh six oh, to twelve man. is unstoppable. Yeah, and it's, it's, we were oblivious to the fact that he could sing without auto tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I grew up. Every hook he played with yeah. auto tune, but, but that was, was his. That was mm-hmm. his. You it know, was his, it man. was almost like he he revolutionized that pitch correction. He irrev- because he made it to where he overdid it. He yeah. oversaturated it. You know, it was never really intended for that. It was just something to help singers stay on pitch. And then what he did is he turned the the. He was like our generation, Zap and Roger, but like T Pain had more hits. But everybody knew Zap and Roger and all those songs. I'm not even him. Computer love and all that shit. Uh, oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But that's T Pain was just how to make hits. I bro, mean, when I first heard I'm make, Sprung. Bro. When I first heard I'm Sprung, I downloaded that. I'm Ocho on my yeah, edge. Bro. I downloaded that ringtone immediately. Bro, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, I really like the T.I. too growing Ooh. up. T.I. What T.I. Are we talking about? When you're you talking about back. ringtones, yeah. Uh, Urban Legend T.I.? No, nah, not that far back. It, 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 he was, he was, he was, King, he was on the scene. Um, Swagger like us, T.I.? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, King Roman no T.I. He was on the scene, definitely. He was, he was, uh, yeah, more commercial when, when I started listening to him. And then I got a flip jack. My uncle had bought us all cell phones. My mom was, had sworn against it. It was seventh grade, eighth grade or something like that. And he ended up buying us all cell phones. And when you said a ringtone, man, I had to get that <laughs> T.I. ringtone, man, so quick, man. I got the Alan Sprung Tink ringtone quick, man. I had that John with the, him and Rihanna. Or, or something like Livia, that. Uh, yeah, so live Livia. Yeah, so live your life. Hey, yeah. uh, I, I had that CD. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gay, man, let me ask you this question. We're talking about music. Mm-hmm. What was the first time you remember singing for a group of people? Ooh. Um, The skating rink. Yeah, the skating rink. North Canton? Yes. The legendary North Canton yeah, skating yeah. rink. <laughs> and this is where that uh, that mysticism, that, that, uh, that, uh, kind of cult following that I've been able to acquire has come from just being able to be out there and put myself out there, man. And I got this, this, uh, uh there was this thing that kind of followed me anywhere I would go. And, and, and you would see like people looking like, Oh, that's, that's gay. That's, that's. And so I would sing right, right after skating and, and no lie, bro. I'm, I'm, you know, 14, 15 years old. And it's a crowd of 50 to 100 girls just standing right there. You know? Outside, when waiting for everybody picking yeah. up, waiting for their ride. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a perfect yeah, stage. Yeah, you see what I'm everybody, saying? Ta- was it Taco Bell over there? Or was it tore down where the hotels was at? Uh, probably, it was a Taco wow. Bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. None that, of that plaza was no, up there it, it across was, the street. There were no yeah. hotels there. It was there a, was nothing that, uh, that uh, Freddy's and all that wasn't there. None of that, bro. It was... Yeah. And that yeah. was your stage. Humble beginnings, bro. Yeah, and it was it was just off the strength. I mean, even to this day, I don't have major capital behind me, you know. We've turned down some 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 opportunities for for our own sake. However, we don't have the capital. We don't have the 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 machine pushing us. It's it just insane. all off of yeah, it's just all off what the did love. You say? Oh, dude. Oh, baby, I just don't get it. Do you enjoy being hurt? Uh, man, just the soulful records that was playing at the time. So Mario, sick. It was no, all like, Neo, oh, okay. Neo. Man, I used to have them like this. Man. And I still do. However, I didn't recognize the uh, 
the influence, man, and I took advantage of it for a long time. And That's been the urban legend about you, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, did you sing at the mall too? Oh man, all over. Oh, Anywhere yeah. I could get it in, I was getting it That's in. That's where I heard it was like before I ever met you. They'd uh-huh. be like, this is dude, he be singing, walking up to people at the mall. It was like an urban legend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I never met you. Didn't know your name. That's what's up. You but see I how life worked like that, man? Yeah. It's beautiful. I never knew your name, but people would say, "His dude be walking up." Oh, you was you was walking up to him. Singing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, mom. Hey, baby, can I sing you something or something like and that? And you was how old? Bro, I was like 14, wow. 15. This is how I started, bro. This is this is what broke that ice. Because I, when I was like 12, I had a school play. Bro, I got so nervous, bro, up on that stage. I told myself, never again. This will not happen again, bro. So I started just going with it, bro. Anywhere I could sing, bro, I was singing. And... And yeah, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the reaction. I fell in love with making people smile, making people feel good, you know? And it's a beautiful thing because it helped me to feel better about myself too, so. So let's fast forward to you getting from singing into the mall and skating ring to like mm-hmm. finally getting in the studio. Like, mm-hmm. did you just start writing? Did you look for studios? When did you realize you wanted mm-hmm. to put this like on wax? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got, in, I got in connection with a guy named Tyler Stage. He was out in Parma at the time. He was working with the label, and he was an engineer. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I'm not really, oh, it was a mutual thing. I ended up, like, recording with somebody, like, it was my first time recording. They really liked what it was. What it, no, there was a moment before that. What's his name? What's his name? He's a local. He just had that, uh, that studio right down here. He had recorded um, um, LeBron and and KD. What's his name? Ah, uh, uh, it'll come to me. But that was the first record that I ever recorded. Um, but in terms of really getting into it and, and developing my craft, it was a gentleman na- named uh, Tyler Stage. He was working with a dude named Keezy out in um, in Parma, and we locked in. We got a couple albums done. And, um, yeah, I, I started to learn a little bit about the mechanics, and I started to learn that he was not really viable in terms of building. Um, you know, he was just, you would pull up to a session and he would wait two hours, yeah. you know what I mean, looking for his eye lock. He would wait three hours trying to figure out what he's about to eat, and it's like, bro, I'm here to work. I just drove 50 minutes all the way up here. You waste my time. Or was you driving to Cleveland? Yeah, Parma, uh, Parma. Yeah. yeah so. See, it's like when you're at the barber shop and you just want to get your hair cut. Bro, like, I'm not here for all this. Eat. I'm not here for this. On the phone. We just want to get to work. And studio time, sure, you're paying for it. It ain't cheap. Yeah, no, no, you not at all. Hour. Not at all. We got to get it going. You know? Adam versus ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm not here for all that, bro. So what I ended up doing was investing into my own equipment and... um yeah, yeah. Since then, I've just been working for about like six to eight years now, just working on my own engineering. I'm not perfect at it, at it by by any means, but I'm able to get a, a, a product that I'm okay with, you know, that I like. And, um, you know, yeah, and then I'm just getting into production and, you know, teaching myself to produce through Pro Tools, which is crazy. Yeah, that's a different beat. Crazy. Um, yeah, and so I picked up Pro Tools and about eight years ago and just been working at it like that and sharing my gift through this medium nowadays. You know, I'm not as accessible as it, as as I used to be in terms of just being out singing to people. Um, you know, I got like you said, I got I got I got a kid now. I got to you know, I got to feed my family and I got to put that as a priority as well. And so. Yeah, my cash app tag is Gabe. No, I'm just yeah, man, I was telling say what you mean, Gabe. <laughs> Inflation is real. We got that's babies. It, man. That's it. That's it. So yeah, yeah, just just you know, uh, uh, channeling my craft in a different way. You know, that was the 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 beginnings of it, though. That's what's up. Like with your projects, as I mentioned when you were doing uh, Stairway. What's that album oh, called? Oh, Dissension. 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 Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. my first introduction to you, your first project. Wow. And I didn't know the other music you had. So now we're talking oh, about... Oh, so you was probably like, yeah, this dude's loony. He, he no! <laughs> never that. You know what I thought? I, right. I, my first thought was, I didn't know you were from here. Mm. Because, like, when it comes to my relationships with artists, it's always one way. When I saw the approach... What was the name of the album? Uh, I apologize. Dissension. Dissension. Yeah. I never seen an approach like that from an artist here because I always mm. like I was on my own island creatively. Yeah. Like, man, I feel like I'm not. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, he's telling his story 
you know what I'm saying? He, he's mm. giving a quality album. So what has been your experience like with them type of concepts? Because you have multiple concept albums. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the year after, I dropped the album called D- uh, Ascension. Ascension, yes. You know? And so it was the polarity. It was understanding that sometimes you got to, you got to, hit rock bottom and you got to go through that you got to go all the way down to the root of of whatever is causing you this harm causing you this affliction in in, in order to to go up that project you know? was loony in a good way bro it was, it was out crazy, there man. it was out there you and know i respect it man i recorded that whole thing in one night bro Really? Off a of, uh, yeah, off a of psychedelic. Oh yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I ain't doing all that far again. Say what you mean, gay. <laughs> Say what you mean, Say what you mean gay. <laughs> Man, well, see, I've I've heard of musicians doing projects and yeah. making music on certain psychedelics, yeah. like. No, you don't do that now. What was it like then? It was purging. It was purging. It was it was uh, an opportunity for me to release all that, and that's why I say it sounds loony because I'm just literally screaming on the microphone for. For every record, you know what Did I you mean. You have a song in there called "Stairway to Hell." Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. single was crazy. That single was crazy. And he was screaming on the hook, and I was screaming <laughs> on the hook, you know. And and when you go back and you listen to it, thinking that okay, this dude's on a psychedelic. He's 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 in a state of mind where he's really feeling a lot. But I also know? knew it was self-expression. Exactly. I didn't look exactly. At it, like I didn't look at it as like, oh, this motherfucker crazy. Yeah. I looked at it as he's expressing himself. Yeah. But I love the way that you express yourself because I could have been like, no, nah, I ain't working with that. That drew me to you. Uh, and then when I like, I didn't even think of like. And that. when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I got a link with him. And then Rama, uh-huh. like we've done a record together. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, are there other projects you may want to do or ideas that you have? Because, like I said, I saw the other ideas and concepts, Ascension. Yeah. Ascension. Yeah. Like, what other projects would you like to do? I think a fatherhood project would be would be awesome. That's cool. um, you know, with, with what K-Dot just dropped a couple years ago, that, that uh, Morale and, and Big Steppers, uh, to me, that was more so. Yeah, it was, a, it was like a fatherhood pro- Like, I like that initiative. Um you know, more so along the lines of the spiritual journey, just continuing, you know, maybe I just named the next title of my project, Continuum, you know, just yeah. continuing the essence of, of understanding these esoteric concepts of, you know, you got to go through the, the rain in order to get to the sun, you know, and... And yeah, yeah, but fatherhood would be a huge one, you know, just helping enlighten enlighten some of these young brothers who are who are brand new into this this thing on how, you know, how it can be done. And, and, you know, yeah, some of the positives and some of the things that you need to watch out for, you know. Jeremy, do you have like a favorite concept album as a listener of music or album that you really enjoy that tells a story? I mean, I get a lot of hate for saying it, but like, I'm a big fan of like MGK and his hotel, his Hotel Diablo album. I think is like a masterpiece because yeah. it's really, it's really heartfelt, and he talks about like a lot of issues he's dealt with, like suicide and depression and stuff like that on that album. Man, I'm trying to think of my favorite concept album as a listener. Mm. Like, my most recent favorite as a concept, I love Mr. Morale. Mm. And the big steppers. I love the fact that he made the album like it was like a therapy session. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he was sitting down with the therapist and the things that he was breaking down and talking about was so relatable as a black man. Mm-hmm. Like um, there was a song on the album where he was arguing with his lady. Mm-hmm. And the argument was like, man, we didn't all had a couple of them Shoo- arguments. Wait. And he was saying, fuck you, bitch. And they was going back and forth. And I'm like, I hate to say it, but. But then by the, end, that, by the end, they all... They, yeah, and we yeah, all yeah, have yeah, been yeah, in that yeah, situation yeah. too. Like, I hate you and yeah, now yeah. I'm... I just back and loving on you again. <laughs> okay, man. But it was also like, it was a revealing truth. Because I'm like, man, we all have been through that. Yeah. But I loved how he broke down. Like, that's not good for your spirit. No, no, It it's wasn't. Not. Like, Mr. Morale, especially experiencing going to therapy, it was like, in that stigma on black men to not go, mm-hmm. it was dope to see an artist like Kendrick Lamar be like, look, yeah. Y'all wonder why y'all ain't got no album from me in this many years. Mm-hmm. I had to take care of Kendrick first. Yeah. Then I had Kendrick Lamar. I think that is so important. It's almost like we're told not to feel. It's it's like we're told to suppress our feelings. We're looked at in such a light that, you know, it's almost superhuman and, and feelings don't bother us. But that can be the furthest thing from the truth, you know. Yeah. Our superpower is to feel our feelings. Emotional intelligence is the ability to feel your feeling while not allowing it to consume you yes. while understanding that this is just a feeling and it's going to come and it's going to it's like a thought it'll enter into your mind and it'll it'll be gone in the next moment you and know some of the some of the things we think are like good 
like emotional wise yeah. or, or they're not like yeah. for example like when two men are going at it mm-hmm. and they feel like solving it is by fighting like, yeah you know what i'm saying unless some he ain't even touching you mm-hmm. but because you may feel a way we got to fight and then like you ever get into an altercation and then when it's over you like why'd i do that that book it know. wasn't necessary he didn't physically touch me he didn't hit me in my face it was just some words you're saying as the aggressor yeah and and you you aggravate the situation you end up coming to blows and then afterwards because you are the aggressor in the situation you feel that sense or you of just threat. don't even feel a cause like, yeah, like, like why, what was we, that why, for? why do we have to get physical what was that for but emotional intelligence and i'm learning this yeah to this day is thinking about it first. Yeah. Because I think as men, we're so reactive. Mm. Prime example in our relationships. When we look back at past relationships that may not have worked out and we may think like, man, if I would have did that different, maybe it would have been a different outcome. Mm. But versus me and being in this situation now, I'm going to do this different. I ain't going to do what I did in my last. To me, that's emotional intelligence because yeah. you're thinking about that person's feelings. Yeah. A lot of times when we're younger and we're not thinking, we're not caring about how this woman may feel, this right. person may feel, right. say something. But as we get older, we start to think, all right, how is that going to make me feel or make them feel if I say this to Jeremy or if I say this to this person or that person? Let me think about it first. Mm -hmm. I think that's emotional intelligence, and that's so important, not just for men, but for people. And it's, it's, yeah, it's based off of the individual, you know? It's based off of what you need to do in order to gauge where you're at emotionally you know we all have outlets you know and sometimes we need to rely on them outlets a little bit more you know for us with the music okay if i'm feeling rageful if i'm feeling bashful if i'm feeling angry if i'm feeling sad okay and it's and it's getting to a point to where it's coming out in ways where i don't intend it to you know i'm treating my lady with this you know any any less than I, i she deserves Okay, I need to go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. I need to get back to my outlets, hit the gym. You know, I need to hit the hoops. I need to get back onto the pen and the pad and and, and figure out how to get this out and channel it in a different way, a more positive way. Those outlets are so necessary. Definitely. They're like anything, you know, Mm -hmm. because, like, you can tell the people that don't have them. Yeah. Like, I think it's a blessing. Like, even with you, you being having the passion that you have, that's your outlet, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me and Gabe, being an artist, that's our outlet. If we're having a good day, we'll make a song. Bad day, we make a song. Or just just listen to music. You know? Or just, yeah. Or just listen to music. Some days just listen. Yeah, man. Some days we'll just listen. Was there ever a song that you made that may have just not only gave you a feeling, but someone else? Like, do you have a personal favorite that people enjoy Ooh, of yours? Bro, there's there's some for different seasons. There's some for different areas, different feelings. Right now, I did a, uh, I did a remix to um, K-Dot's uh, Sing About You. I'll have to Ooh. play it for you, bro. It's, it's, it's like a yeah. great Kendrick song, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing About Me? Yeah. Oh, man. So I flipped it. You know what I mean? He's talking about, I promise that, promise that you will sing about me. I'm talking like, promise that I'll sing about you. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, just going through the whole the whole phases of what makes me me and, and you know, yeah, it's, it's powerful. What's your dream collaboration? Like, if you could do a uh-huh. record, no budget, you don't care about that, what's, like, the ultimate Gabriel the Angel feature Ooh, that you would love to have? That's so tough, bro. Or if you could... Dead or alive? Anyone. Oh, Mike. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson? Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of pressure. Bro, I'm, t- <laughs> I'm with it. You got to understand how I see myself. <laughs> yeah, Gabe. You know, say what you mean, mean what you say. You yeah, got to understand how I, I see myself. I got Michael Jackson, but I'm out, I'm out sleeping outside. You, know, you dig yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? It's worth it. And one day, you're going to be able to sell that record and buy 25 yards Man, that you could what? just lay up in. You know what I mean? You buy 25 people. 20, oh, right. <laughs> that's, how, that's how valuable that song is going to be. <laughs> Let me get a Michael Jackson feature. I'm like, who are y'all? What? Yeah, 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 got a yeah. Michael Jackson song. Nah, Man, the, the, the name of the game is to stay humble, yes. regardless of how how low into the valley God takes you, or no matter how high on on the mountaintop. You know, the the name of the game is to to be grateful, to remain humble, you know, and to to be in service of others. And that's why I got into music in the first place, and that's what's carried me this long. You know, what is Gabriel the Angel's message? Like, what do you want people to? Tell oh, I got some good news, man. Gabriel in the Bible, he shared good news. I got the same good news. Well, it's not the same. It's the same. The good news is, is you're you. You get to be you for the rest of your life, you know, and and, and you have this opportunity to fall in love with you. And and that's the good news. And it's really amazing because the more that you fall in love with you, you realize the more life falls in love with you and you just start to compound these blessings and everything just starts to 
just just manifest in such the, the the most beautiful way you know that's the good news i like that man uh one last question uh-huh would you go to a crock pot festival what the hell is a crock pot festival? <laughs> oh. what the heavens is a crock pot festival what is that we have this idea jeremy you want to pitch him all right yeah let me hear it. so you know how there's the ribs burn off right okay it's the same thing as that but just with the like a crock pot competition and, oh and, bro i'm throwing down okay oh. and then i'm and throwing then, down and the the, the main attraction is going to be the crock pot tasting towards the end <laughs> but while everything's cooking while everything's getting prepared you know there's going to be like games yeah. uh you know maybe some like drinking like dessert vendors this is brilliant. maybe some uh <laughs> this some, is some brilliant. performances by john or even you this is brilliant just a whole crock pot festival where the main attraction this. is the love this. taste test not only will I, I gladly perform, I will gladly bring my crock pot and I will What's throw it What's your favorite crock down. pot dish? I'm not, about to to give you, I'm not about to give you my sauce. <laughs> how, how I'm going to give you my recipe when that's, he's... That's what you got to worry about. He's yeah. the crock pot So, so, so I see the conniving now because you, y'all, I see it, dog. I see it. We may want you to be an investor, Gabe. No, I'm, I'm coming to win, bro. Nah, I'm coming to win a nah, competition. No, you coming to eat. I'm, yeah, and, and, that, and that part, and like, that part. If y'all wanted to perform, I got to eat. I'm like, all right, gang. We gonna, all right, bro. <laughs> I need a meal ticket. You need a meal ticket, man. <laughs> so real quick, man, I want to take a break, and I want to do a station called Peace Positive Point, where you right. said quote, I say quote, mm. and Jeremy says a quote. And we'll play one of your mm. songs on a break. Do you have a specific song you want us to play on the break? Oh, that's out. Um... Man, I got so much music that's that's yeah, yeah. Let me pick one or Yeah, yeah, I'll leave it, I'll leave it, I'll leave it to the expert. Okay. I'll leave it to the expert. Cool, man. Listen, we'll be right back. Peace positive point episode 149, Gabriel the Angel. We'll be peace, right peace. back. Peace. Peace. Yo, episode 149 of the Say What You Mean podcast. We got my guy Gabriel the Angel. I got to dap you up, man. Check it. Thank you for being on the show once again. Yeah, man. Much love. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Jeremy, what you got going on today? Uh, nothing. I think I'm just going to go home and chill. And usual, just relax. It's Sunday. I'm off work tomorrow, so. Gabe, yeah, what about you? What's your Sunday looking like? I got to go rehearse for an upcoming set. Yeah, tell us about that set, man. You got a show coming up yeah, July yeah, yeah. 20th, right? July 20th, we got an R&B showcase. It's my first headlining show right here at the Backyard in Canton, Ohio. Yes, sir. It's a it's a legendary uh, venue, and I'm just honored to be the honorary member right Fam- now. Famous you know? is performing with you, right? Famous is going to be there. Famous guy. Video you know? legend. Shout yeah. out Famous, man. You know? And we're, we're thinking about having another opener there, but we don't know yet. We okay. Oh cool, man. Through. So um I gotta make a phone call real quick. Do you think? Because we have we have another we Krishan yeah, came yeah. and we have another uh I forgot where he's at. Where is Zach at? I think he said he's down in Columbus, isn't he? Okay, yeah. He's out of state. Well for those watching the podcast, Zach is in a hotel and he's losing his mind. <laughs> and I don't know what Zach does when he's bored. Can we call him real quick? Let's call him. All right, let's call Michael Zach. Him out. People have been asking what he's been up to. Can y'all hear him? Yeah. What about now? Are you sure? All right, there we go. What's up? Michael is Zach. <laughs> can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear y'all. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, man. We, we, we're we live on the show. We got Gabriel the Angel on the podcast, episode 149. Wagwan. <laughs> How you doing? Wagwan. We good, man. Yo, man, I'm calling you for a couple of reasons. One, because we miss you on the show. And the second one is... um. I don't know what you do when you're bored by yourself. I'm kind of concerned. <laughs> so what do you do, Zach? What you been doing in that hotel, man? Can I talk about that on the show? Uh, <laughs> see, this is why I didn't want to call him. Zach, what? Say what you mean. He's been ordered Yeah, from but that when catalog. Zach says what he means, it's, it's, it's nasty. It's far out. It's far out. Yeah. Zach, <laughs> say the appropriate stuff you've been doing in the hotel. Netflix? I mean, in the hotel, I really, I really ain't been doing shit for real. I've just been kind of playing my Xbox. Cause I'm here for three weeks, so I had to bring something to pass the time. What you been doing on the Xbox? Just bullshitting, playing games. I can't get it to connect to Wi-Fi, so I can't even play with any of my boys. Hotel so, Wi-Fi is terrible. Mm-hmm. So we're struggling over here, but you know, two two more weeks, and yeah, I'm in this bitch for three weeks, so it's a little rough. But so, what exactly are you doing? You can you share that on the show? Yeah, I'm out here. Uh, for CDL school, trying to get my my commercial driver's license so I can start driving semis and shit. Oh, that's cool. Good for you, man. Well, um, you wanna you wanna say a Dr. Seuss quote? You did you say one every episode? Do you have one? 
I didn't want to feel because Rashawn came on the show. He brought Kai, and I was like, let's call Zach, man, and make sure he's okay. We about to do a piece positive point. You want to do one? Yeah, y'all go first. Let me uh, let me find something. <laughs> nice. Of course, you gotta go first. Yeah, man, we got Gabe on the show. So while you're on the show, we're uh, gonna shout my guy out. Um, we appreciate you, man, for joining the show today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, Thank really you appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, shout out to Jeremy. Shout out to everybody. When well, y'all know how we give it up, man. Peace, positive point on the Say What You Mean podcast. Next week will be our 150th episode. That's crazy. 149, and then we're on. That's to not crazy. It's beautiful. Thank you, man. It's really beautiful. Appreciate that, man. I, I'm very happy and grateful for those listening, those watching. You know how it is. So, Zach, you ready for your quote? Just don't make me go first. I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> okay. Who wants to kick off Peace Positive Point? Who wants to go first? I can go first. All right, go ahead, Jeremy. What you got for us? Uh, my quote was by Theodore Roosevelt, and um, it said, believe that you can, and you're already halfway there. Mm, what's that mean to you? Um, I mean, that can just go for any aspect in life. Um, you know, if you need a starting point, you know, just believe that you can do something and you'll be able to bring it to fruition. You're already you're already halfway there to being able to, like, start whatever it is, whether it's a new single, a new project, um, an art, whatever. You know, you just got to believe that you can. like that, man. Say it one more time. Um, believe that you can and you're already halfway there. All right. Gabe, what you got for us, man? Uh, drop that gym for us. Yeah, I'm going to drop a scripture. It says, uh, cast your burdens unto the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Mm. So what that means to me is is surrenderance. It's accepting the fact that there's things that we cannot change, you know, and and you know we ask for, we pray for for strength and courage in order to uh, to withstand. And um, you know, anytime that we have a problem, you know, it's better to let it go than to hold it in. You know, any 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 with anything, and you'll see that the fruits of that. Are, are a lot more uh, beneficial and a lot more positive than if you were to hold on to the problems and, the, and rather than focus on the solution. Did you say that scripture one more time? I yeah, like it's, that. it's cast your burdens unto the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. I appreciate that, Gabe. That's love. love man. I love that. Love. And my positive point is from the great Martin Luther King Jr. Oh. The time is always right to do the right thing. Mm. I like that quote because, uh, you know, me knowing you personally, I'm very proud of where you at in life. Yeah. I know where you were going and what was going on and you making that progress. Yeah. It's always time to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? We talk about our friends and family who haven't been doing the right thing yeah. and we make the choice to do the right thing. Yeah. You didn't have to be here today. You didn't have to be on this show. You didn't have to go to church. I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to call Michael Zach. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the time is always Wait. right to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Um... Every choice we make is a reflection for others and not just ourselves. So that's my quote for today. The time is always right to do the right thing. Martin Luther King Jr. So, Michael, Zach, what you got for us, man? I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I feel like he's always up to something. What are you doing, up Zach? Season, huh? I said it's up to something season. <laughs> It sounded like he was on that free type of yeah, time. Yeah, man, over I don't there. know what he's doing over there. Did we call that a bad time? You got your quote? Yeah, I was opening a beer. Oh, okay, he's opening a beer. <laughs> it is, what, like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> sir? Yeah, man, you all right? I got to come down here and get you. He's <laughs> <out there>, <laughs> drinking beers at 3 o'clock in the hotel room. Huh? I've been here I've been here for a week by myself, you know? Oh, y'all know tough. I really don't. Can you leave? Really can, can you go somewhere or you can't leave the hotel? No, I can leave. It's just, you know, I'm in Pittsburgh, the shittiest place on earth. So it's like, oh, it's not that Steelers. bad. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh is a beautiful city. It is a beautiful city. Wait, you're city. in Pittsburgh right now? It's, in, it's a nice city. It's in the, I'm, I'm on the outside. I'm about 10, 15 minutes from downtown. So I'm Man, outside of Pittsburgh. Go up. <laughs> Go you check say, it yeah, out. definitely go downtown. You can crack a beer at the at the bar at least. Right, man. Yeah, go to it, but he don't oh, like no, to I'll do that later. Just, I get, you know, my food's all paid for and stuff, so I'll go out to the bar and stuff later. I'll oh, go, you cool. know, go all right. nice to eat. Don't get, get no cabin fever or nothing. You need to get you some Steelers merch. <laughs> James, game you're going to get beat up. <laughs> what you got for us, man? What's your, what's your Dr. Seuss quote for the episode? What you got? All right, here we go. You can find magic wherever you look. Sit back and relax. All you need is a book. Mm. <laughs> All right. Cool. He says, he I says, like that. That's his, what's I like that, that mean to you, Zach? 
Reading is not lame, kids. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. Uh, last, last book I read had to do with semi trucks, but that's besides the point. You can dive into <laughs> you can dive into a book, and and you can get lost the same way you can get lost in you know a TV show or you know video game. You can get lost the same way. So it's not lame. Read books, gain knowledge. Yeah. Zach, I don't think you read books, man. I really don't think you read books. Like that's, that's <laughs> he so reads wildly. semi books. What did you say, Zach? That's so wildly disrespectful. What was, <laughs> what was the last book you read besides the CDO book? Uh, it was actually a book about Martin Luther King. Oh, uh, cool. Don't make me feel bad. <laughs> don't get me wrong. That was probably like sixth or seventh grade. But... I was just saying, oh. I was just about to say that. Was a school project. I thought it was like last year. I was like, <laughs> whatever, Zach. You... So, so I see why you gave the quote then. You're actually just giving yourself the information you need. He's reading to... his book report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling yourself you yeah. got to read more books. But he reads he, he Dr. Under... Seuss, so. See, he understands. Gabriel understands where I'm coming from. I get where Thank you're you, coming Gabriel. from, man. So it's that's what you can up. do. He can go to the Pittsburgh Library and get him some. Oh, yeah, man. Library yeah, card, go to the library. <laughs> While you're in the hotel, you can catch up on it's your It's a knowledge. nice day outside. Go ahead, yeah. read, bro. Get your books in. I I am going to go to a uh, a Pittsburgh Pirates game at some point this week. That's dope. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Maybe, maybe uh, here in the next like Tuesday or something, they got a late game. Tuesday and Wednesday, they got a late game. So I'll get out and do something, but yeah. Overall, like, bro, it's you, you do get a little cooped up in the fucking hotel, and, I, and so for two more weeks, it's gonna be rough. So don't forget about me over here. We'll never forget about you. Like I said, Krishan came, and we just wanted to make sure you were good, and also give you your flowers, man. You know, you are there for CDL training. We're we're always rooting for you, and always proud of you, man. We just are tired of people thinking because Krishan's on this show or you're not on the show that we got into some type of fight or we're arguing. I don't know why people like beef so much. Like we have adult things to do. Krishan's a father, and Zach's trying to get his job together. Okay. We're not fighting. They're We're, not like us. Yeah, they're not like us. I, I do have a, a cool-ass rental vehicle, though. I got a Dodge right. Challenger. So oh. I, I, I best stay out of trouble with that. It'd be a lot honestly. cooler if it was a Hellcat. Uh, well, it's mm-hmm. it's still cool, Jamie. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Zach about to go dragging out there in yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah. No, nah, man, but that's the thing. That's the, that's the, I put myself in a bad situation because... I'm I'm here to get a professional driving license. But Don't yet, mess driving. it up, bro. See, he wanted to go skirting in the car. He was trying to go shoot a rap video. <laughs> Come on, Zach. Just stay in the room. See, that's what I'm talking about. You about to go out there and go drag racing in that Challenger. What do you need to do, John? You're telling me stay in the room. You're telling me to get out the room. What should I do? What go for I a do? walk. I don't trust you in that car. Go get some books. <laughs> yeah, go to the library. <laughs> Nah, man, but, nah, but uh, for real, man, any uh, any shout-outs before we get out of here? You got any shout-outs, Zach? Hey, shout-out to all y'all. Thanks for giving me a call and keeping me in the loop. I appreciate it. Of course, Gabe. Any shout-outs before we get out of here, man? Yeah, shout-out my mom for birthing me. Shout-out my dad for carrying me for, for all that time. Uh, shout-out to Canton, Ohio. Shout-out to John P. Uh, for hosting this. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah. And shout-out to my son, Lynx. What's his name? Lynx. Oh, man. Yeah, That's Link, a dope name. Lynx Azaria. That's dope. Yeah, All right. Yeah. He's singing, too? Uh, no, nah, nah, he's going. got a different bag. He got a different, he got bag. A different bag. Okay, okay. Yeah. Jeremy, any shout-outs? Uh, just shout-out to you guys, Zach, Krishan, um, my family. Uh, shout-out my niece and my nephew. We went to seeing them yesterday. Okay. Nice. Shout-out to my man Gabe for being on the show. Uh, Shout-out my homie Al Mecca. We went to the Italian festival last night and checked out that Prince tribute. I thought I was watching dope. Prince. That was dope. That was dope. Um, Shout-out to the city, man. I had a good time last night. I just love the centennial and just feeling like we got something in Canton. Man, have you noticed? There's been something every night it yes. feels like, yeah, bro. Man. And it's, I, I love it, bro. The centennial, and if anyone watching, the centennial is one of like the best things that happened to, to the Canton. community of city. I like I went to that more. show last night, and I, it was a good time. Everyone was enjoying the tribute, man, um, the food, uh, the, the fact that they're bringing it back downtown, the event, yeah. and we don't got to go all the way to places. place. A central right. place where we all right. can go. It's dope. Shout out to the city. Shout out Al Mecca. Shout out Gabe, Jeremy, Krishan, Zach, all the listeners. Be sure y'all like, rate, subscribe, follow us, SWYM Podcast. Um, I'm going to London in September. 
So I'm looking forward to that. What? Yeah, man, I've been playing. I've been on TikTok watching all the videos of the people talking. You got a show lined up? <laughs> Listen, if I don't get this show that I want, I'm going to find me an open mic. Bro, yeah. That's it. I just wanted to That's wrap it. out there. Yeah. So I've been planning that. Bro, they're about to love you out there. I hope bro. so, man. Bro, they're going to love you. I'm gonna call y'all like, hey, y'all, uh, I got I'm a flat. Staying. I got a flat out here. I'm staying out here. <laughs> you you might you might go around and stay out I there. I caught a flat. I caught, <laughs> I caught a flat. I'm like, y'all coming to see me? Oh man, them flights is fifteen hundred, John. If you might do ahead and just zoom us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just zoom y'all. I can only afford a bottle of water. <laughs> yeah, man. That's it. It probably is. It's expensive out there. You is know? It? Yeah, yeah. look. Bit. They got mail carriers out there. They What'd you say? They got mail carriers out there. Yeah, the Royal Mail. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the, the Royal. Man, let me go ahead and get an app. I'll see y'all next week, man. <laughs> hey, this job you the MC. Thank y'all for watching, listening. Say what you mean. Episode 149. Gabriel the Angel. Peace. Peace. Uh, say what you mean. Mean, mean. mean what you say. say. I'm from the 330. Where them boys don't play. Don't play. Say what you mean. Mean. Mean what you say. say. I'm from the 330. Oh. Where them boys don't play. From the northwest to the northeast. Say my name once and they know it's me. Southeast to the southwest. No arguments. Yeah, I got next, John P. One, two. Let me talk my shit again real quick. Uh, I will not settle for.